Well, hey everybody, Skip here. Today we're talking about a fun new game that I found called Lena's Inception, and I actually have started speedrunning this game. Uh, I played through it a little bit and decided, what the heck, let's actually go ahead and do a speedrun of the game, because that's kind of the basis of the actual game. Now, if you haven't played this game yourself and you want to, I do recommend you go ahead and pause the video, pick up the game, spend a handful of hours in it, play it, and try it out for yourself. Or, you know, watch, I'd say, maybe 10 minutes or so of this game to see if even you want to play it, but I'm telling you, you should definitely go ahead and do that. It's very charming, as you can see. It's got both 8 and 32-bit graphics and has a fantastic storyline. Took a little bit of spoilers, maybe, by the end of it. Uh, but you can see definitely got some Legend of Zelda influences in here as well, sort of, I think, Link's Awakening or Link to the Past style things. Lots of references to that. The difference about it, and the reason why it makes such a fun and exciting speed game for me, is that it's actually completely randomized every time you play it. So if you boot up this game, you saw actually the very beginning, you might have seen it, it actually showed which seed I was playing. And so the locations of the dungeons, the order of the bosses that you fight, the orders you get the items, etc., is all randomized, including what puzzles you get. You can see there's a button puzzle going on right here, which I think I messed up. Yeah, I'm, I'm bad at button puzzles. I realized right there I made a little bit of a mistake, but <laughs> that's okay. You can just go back and redo it again. I'm terrible at button puzzles. I really, really am. I don't I don't know what to say. If you're better at them, maybe you'll do better at this, but I, I, I'm getting better at them now, but now that I've played the game a little bit more. Um, the storyline itself is very similar from game to game, but where you have to go in the order that things actually happen uh, is will be varied and different as well, and there's lots of things you can do. There's actually multiple endings as well. Uh, for the speedrun here, we're actually running with what's called the sacrifice ending. We'll have to explain why it's called that, because that again would be spoilers. Uh, there's also a perfect ending, as well as a catastrophe ending that you can get. As you can see, there's actually an in-game timer at the very top. It will actually tell you at the end which ending that you got. Very much having speedrunning the game actually in mind. In fact, there's some built-in challenge modes as well to the game, such as playing through dungeons with different options, with certain weapons only, etc. Anyways, I won't, I won't tell you the actual story of the game itself, but you're probably not going to be able to see it with me trying to text mash as fast as I could through that. Uh, but you will see we're going to have to go into eight different dungeons, fight eight different bosses, and then a final boss to get to the ending. Along the way, we'll be picking up different power-ups, and uh, power-ups necessarily are different items and weapons that we can use or abilities, such as the ability to jump, uh, a lighter, which uh, we can use to, to dash. You can, just, you can see me there checking the map because I have to figure out where the first dungeon is. It's not always in the same place, and it's actually relatively close here. Uh, to where we had actually started out. Now, uh, what you'll be seeing me do here within each level that I get to is trying to figure out where the main item for each dungeon is. Now, unless the room itself is locked, like that one locks itself, then you don't necessarily have to uh, fight the enemies in each room. You can just freely walk through. So you'll see me going into areas, seeing if there's a free path out that I can get to without the ability within a dungeon, uh, or if I actually need to fight my way out. I have to fight my way out of this room. Now, the different things that you have, you can see there's little skull platforms. I can't go out that direction because I don't have the ability to lift heavy things yet. Uh, you can see I actually noticed before I, I actually missed the fact that I was in an item room because uh, when I checked the map I had the little yellow dot showing up on the map. So a little bit of a mistake there. I had to go ahead and go back here, fight these monsters, and you'll see an item dropping here, which is unfortunately just a meteorite, completely unnecessary for the speedrun, but something you will be looking for as you play through casually. So here now I get, whenever I see this little glitched dude here, that's why I know I'm in a main item room for the dungeon. And I'm going to be picking up this main item. This one is the one that allows me to pick up heavy objects like skulls. And I'm going to exit out. I'll be coming back to each of the dungeons later, but there's a much faster way of beating the dungeon after you've collected the item from the 8th dungeon. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Like I said, so if you don't want any spoilers, you want to play the game yourself. If you're liking what you see so far, pause the video, go pick it up, play it. Trust me, you'll love it. It's normally like 10 bucks on Steam or itch.io. So definitely go ahead and grab that. Did you see here I can actually pick up these and actually head north, the direction that I'm wanting to go. Now I made a mistake here. I was thinking that this was a different house. I didn't actually need to go in there. Um, 
the house of the three bears. I was thinking that was where I could get the hammer, which would be really great to get this early on in the game, but you don't actually get that until you're in the east side of the valley itself. Quick map check to figure out where I'm going. Don't know quite yet what's going to be in this dungeon as for item. But you can see me just moving through rooms that don't lock themselves. This room did lock itself, so I got to fight the enemies. At this point, all I can do is I can slash things like grass or these green gems. And I can pick up things like the skulls to throw them. If I, if I run into rocks, I can't pick those up as I need to blow those up with the bomb. So I see you check that room. It's a dead end. Nothing I can do there. The dead ends themselves and the different, the actual different uh, areas that you get into. This is an item room, as you can see, your little blue dot there on the floor. And if I check the map, I would have the yellow dot on the map. But the if you run into a dead end within a corridor, if you're playing through casually, that's definitely a place you'd want to go into, is that might be a place that drops a meteor or a potion or a tunic or something like that. Now I've got the dungeon map. I can quickly see which direction that I'm going. I don't know specifically which of the yellow dots I need to head to, but I'm just going to walk my way towards one of them. And I lucked out. It was actually relatively early. So we just got to knock these crabs into the water. One jumped in for us. Great, now we have the feet, so we can now swim in water. So now I can pick up skulls. I can swim in water. And uh, those are the items, and I can slash and eat grasses. Not going to rub, rub I'm picking up the potions. If I do see tunics, I'm going to want to pick those up, because I'm looking for a speed tunic if I can find it. I don't think I actually got one during this run. It's just sort of luck of the draw, whether or not you get it. Also, the fact that I cannot remember where the shop is. Uh, if I remember correctly, I discover later on in the run that the shop is actually on the same screen as one of the dungeons, and so it's actually not showing up on the map, because the map icon of the dungeon is actually overriding what would be uh, the spot for the, uh, the shop itself. A little bit of difficulty finding uh, dungeon number uh, three or four, whichever one that we're on right now, but I'm making my way over to it. Dungeon number four, that's right. Don't know where I think I'm going. I, for I forgot I could swim. <laughs> that's what it was. So we gotta actually walk to the dungeon from the bank here. Talk to the chairman of the bank. And he's gonna drop us through the floor. Really nice if early on, if you can pick up the lighter because you got these long corridors and you have to walk slowly through them or the speed tunic helps as well. Don't have those yet, so. It's just what we got, but in into uh, level four before seven minutes. That's not bad. Now, I don't have a world record or anything like that. This is certainly not a world record video either. You can probably see from the title the time I actually got on it as well, because I did get to submit this to actually get on the leaderboards. Um, but it's still a respectable time. I think this is the second time I actually made a full run through it. The first time I tried to do it in the video didn't record, so I'm like, you know, let's do it again. And I actually got a significantly better time, but there's the lighter. So now we have the ability to actually dash. Now, unlike the other dungeons, Dungeon 4, you do not get sent in in the entrance, so it's a lot harder for you to actually make your way out. May as well pick up the map while we're here in the map room. I can see where I got to go to get out of the dungeon. I got a ways to actually go to get out. I'm going the wrong way real quick, though. Now you'll see me able to do this when I've got a move where I can just zoom halfway across the map. You make it about halfway across horizontally or all the way up and down if you go vertically. I should have dashed right there, but I did not. Make my way back out of this dungeon. Do have to be careful because you're literally playing with fire. But there we go. Make our way out. A little bit more text to mash our way through. And out we go. Back in the bank, we should be leaving the bank now and heading our way over to the bridge. And on to the second half of the map. Now, it's not a 20 minute run because yes, we are, you know, close to, you know, we're <laughs> close to the fourth dungeon slash halfway through, but it's not actually halfway through. The rest of the dungeons actually get significantly longer, and then there's a matter of going back through each of the dungeons and fighting the bosses in each of those. So we do, we're do we not halfway done with the game yet. There's a lot of dialogue here for you to mash through. I'm not really great at mashing yet, especially because I realized I had had an ability mapped to one of the buttons I was actually mashing, and I kept using it. 
See, I keep doing it there. A trick I've actually learned since then, you can actually map, and you can use your keyboard, and you can map two keys on your keyboard for mashing that it's not gonna actually be using any other buttons. You don't accidentally like activate an item when you're trying just to mash through text. So if you're doing that, you can actually use a controller as well as some keybinds. If you're just using keyboard, you can actually set uh, your, you know, mashing to two different keys. It allows you to do that. So it's, it's very nice even just on keyboard. So I'm gonna throw the lighter in a different spot where I like to have it and uh, try to find our way over to dungeon five. There we go, that should be dungeon five. You really can't get to the dungeons out of order unless you use some really interesting speed tech. It's really not necessary to do uh, for this specific category. For a different category, the, the catastrophe category, there is some speed tech you can do once you get the lighter and the jump and that you can go up to a ledge and actually jump over the ledge. Not something that I've been really good at doing quite yet. I just recently had to ask, hey, how do you actually even do that? And I've not been good at doing it. Um, but it is something that I've seen. You can see in the world record run uh, for Catastrophe. It actually takes advantage of skipping some one of the dungeons to actually get to a different dungeon, kind of out of order. Sequence break a little bit and use the jump and the lighter together. So we're going to go ahead and clear this room out to get whatever items in this room. It's probably a meteor, but you know... Hoping it's the map to make my life significantly easier. These bigger dungeons are a lot harder. Starting at level 5 are a lot harder to figure out without the map. Oh, there is the map. That's really good news. Let's go ahead and check the map here once I get... I don't know why I'm fighting him, just because I wanted to. So, it looks like we're heading down a dead end, so I'm probably going to bicycle my way back to the entrance. And then head on up. Map reading and trying to figure out the different layouts of the maps and where you want to go is difficult. It's really too bad that for me, I am really bad. I, I don't need this item. I don't know why I'm deciding to fight here because uh, the only possible things it could be, well, it could be a key. I might need a key. Actually, I might need a key to get over to where the item is. It's a meteor. I knew, I, I knew it as soon as I'd walked in, but I decided, you know, let's play it anyways. Because if I don't clear the room, it ends up being a key that I need to get through a door. Uh, you don't need any keys in uh, levels one through three. I'm using the wrong button to try and flame dash my way through. Here we go. This is what I'm trying to get to. I'm pretty fortunate that uh, I got that pretty early, and it's unfortunately green. The green enemies regen their health, and they're just annoying to deal with. Especially if you've got no bombs, especially no bomb arrows. These snails are difficult too. You can see a little bit of a slime trail that they're leaving after they walk. Uh, that will usually poison you. Now, you can clear out the slime trail using the flame, but see, these guys just have a lot of health. Thinking about the potion, but eh, I don't really want to mess with it. Let's just grab the bow. Let's get out. Come back later to feed all these bosses. All right, on to uh, level six, figuring out where I got to go. I still can't go up because I can't pick up those rocks. Those are bomb-only rocks. And it looks like I'm going the wrong way. This is difficult routing. I think I need to go down and around. Kind of following this path a little bit would be my guess. Throw an arrow to get through the target. Could have just gone up there. I went the long way around for some reason. Just checking to see what I got. Now that's a house that I should have gone into. I can't go into that house yet to grab the hammer. I want to come back to that to grab the hammer if I can remember. But I need a bomb to get into that house to grab the hammer. So now I'm stuck here trying to figure out how the heck do I get over to this area. And I must have either I read something wrong or I missed something. Either way, I've really got to figure out how to get around. I also need to remap. I think I need to go to the right and around. Uh, I need to remap so I'm not constantly using that whistle. I should have just followed the path here where I probably would have been really good. Yeah, we're figuring it out here. I think I misread that again. I think I needed, I needed to go to the left. I don't know where I'm thinking I'm going. I have the bow and arrow. Should shoot my way through the target. See, routing makes all the difference here. Just to shoot my way in there. Whew. That was a tough one to get to. I don't know why I've got my chicken following me around. I should dismiss that because chicken literally not helpful at this point. And you run the risk of accidentally talking to the chicken every now and then and 
That takes a significant amount of time. Alright, well, I'm going to keep going up, I think. I'm just maybe not noticing that the chicken is there. That might be. I might not have noticed Henrietta following me around. I am sometimes completely blind to things going on on the screen. I can't just go through here. Alright, hopefully... Oh, these guys will explode. I am down to half a heart. Now down to no hearts. Choosing to go the different direction. There we go. So now we're... We ended up, did end up finding this guy here. He gets more and more difficult as you make your way through because then he's got more weapons as well while you have more weapons. It makes sense when you kind of understand what's actually happening with the game. But again, spoilers. I don't want to give you. But we'll just fight our way through here, pick up the item for this dungeon, and then we'll keep on going. You can usually figure out what you're going to be getting. For example, I'm getting the bomb here. We'll see if I remember to go back to actually get that hammer. I'm probably not going to remember to go back to the house to get the hammer, even though that would have been the smart play to do. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and equip the bombs. Let's see if I remember. I don't, I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just <laughs> hyper-focused on getting to the next dungeon, which I can just do by just bombing my way through here. Now, you do. I do have bomb arrows, which I'm kind of forgetting that I have. Bomb arrows are nice. Uh, because what you can do is you can uh, equip a bomb and then use your arrow to fire that bomb at something. And it will not use any arrows. It'll just use bombs. It did, did it right there. You can see how quickly that just fired off and exploded. Now, I, I should have gone back to that house to pick up the hammer. Now, the reason is that you can break blocks with the bomb or you can break blocks with the hammer. Obviously, using the hammer does not actually use any of your bombs. Also, the hammer is better than the basic sword as an attack weapon. For one thing, there are some enemies which can dodge uh, your... which can dodge your sword who will not be able to dodge your hammer. And so that's a very, very useful thing. You see here... So here you can see I'm going to use this. I'm going to wait for them to actually get grouped together so I can have many bombs, so I want to kind of conserve them. I can hit all three of them together. One more shot get the item. It's a blue key. I probably am going to need that. And this dungeon, as you can see, there's a little pit in front of the door. This is going to be where I'm going to get the jumping ability uh, in this dungeon. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the item room to pick up the jumping ability. Keep in mind that I have a blue key. I can now make it through blue doors as well as now having the map. Just got to figure out which what direction I think it's going to be in. Here I'm trying to set up. See, these guys explode. You can just, you can get just out of range of them and hit them, but it's pretty dangerous. I'm opting to do that for the sake of conserving bombs. And I'm going to go up right after this just to see. And this is not the right room. I don't know why I decided to come in and fight this room. Unless I'm thinking there might be another key. Possibly a green key I might need to get to the item. That may have been the thinking that I had. Uh, I will not need the keys for later. When I come back into the room and it's just a meteor, that's really unfortunate. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and walk back and see if I can uh, get back over to where the next item room is. Uh, I think it's down. I don't remember, but I definitely don't need to fight these guys right now. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and go on down. Should have used my lighter there to go faster, but you know, these are things that can be improved on. Okay, I like did not need that door anyways. So the gamble that I took where I actually got the... I got the meteor. I didn't need to take that anyways. And this is the enemy, or as you can see there, he's able to dodge right through even my bomb arrows. And you can see most of those swipes. While he runs away from my sword, he's just straight up dodging them. If I'd gone to pick up the hammer, it would have made this significantly faster, including every other time I have to fight crabs later on or break through walls. Definitely an item that if you stumble across that house, you want to bomb the door, get in and find it. Picked up the spring though, so we're going to go ahead and uh, exit out. Uh, there and so let's go ahead and exit out to the entrance and let's go let's keep going at some point I got a notice that I got Henrietta still following me around I, I don't again know when that happened or why it took me so long to figure that out uh, tr also trying to figure out where to go the top route is the hardest route to take although it looks like I should probably go ahead and take that I don't know why that didn't explode but I can now jump I sometimes forget that I can jump 
That was a pretty quick find, though. To find my way in here. Now, there is a skip. I don't remember how fast this takes me. You're supposed to do this whole left side, and I picked up the wrong item. I meant to take out the lighter, not the bomb. Got to respawn that little platform there. I can use the jump and <laughs> the lighter. It's going to take me a couple of attempts here. Just, just a couple. Okay, after I picked up the right item. Then you can just go through here. Now, you're supposed to go to the left side, uh, clear a couple enemies out, shoot an arrow through. It's a whole process. There you can see I accidentally jumped into the poison. So I'm going to do a little bit of poison damage here. Uh, it won't kill me, but uh, it's a little bit annoying, especially only having three hearts uh, at this point in the game. Soon I will be able to pick up more hearts, making the tail end of the run a little bit easier. But early on, until you actually start defeating the bosses, you've got zero hearts. I don't know why I'm trying to push that that way. It's like I've, I've not done this button puzzle before. This button puzzle is always the same. Uh, so you uh, know RNG there. Get over to Professor Maxwell. Talk to him. He says, follow me. And go talk to him and make it into our final dungeon before we go back into all of the dungeons. I'd say at this point, we're about halfway through with the run. Maybe a little bit past halfway, but right about when you meet Maxwell, you're about halfway done. Good estimate uh, with your run. Now, granted, the second half can go significantly faster. There's still a lot of RNG with the actual dungeon layouts. Now, easily, I'm going to be able to or not able to navigate them. But, uh, you know, we're, we're making good, good progress here. Take our way down into the dungeon. This one, much like Dungeon 4, we don't start in the entrance. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I remember to start off going down here. Now, why I got stuck, I actually don't know. This may have been a controller disconnecting issue. But I am literally... There we go. For some reason, I could not move. I think my controller had disconnected for a little bit. That's what happens. Um, So let's see if I'm smart enough. I did not remember to go down. What, what you want to do at the beginning there is you actually want to head down to the beginning to actually see if you can uh, get the start entrance opened up so you can bicycle out after you find the item. Otherwise, you got to backtrack and walk all the way back out again. Again, here, I wish I had the hammer because it would made fighting these crabs significantly easier. You can also throw a little bit of lighter in there. Uh, or if you get them up against a wall, you can do that trick. Uh, where you're actually hitting them with the bomb uh, arrows because uh, the bomb arrows will explode against the wall and then always hit them. But I'm just going to corner him in the corner here, slash at him until I find the blue key. I definitely need the blue key. Get out of the room here. Uh, I just noticed Henrietta was there and I'm like, get out of here. Henrietta has literally been following me around for the whole second half of the map and I just noticed. That's keen sense of observation here. See again where this hammer would have just been... Oh, so much faster. So much time save if I'd remembered. I need to note to self then if I find those in later runs to remember to go back and pick that up. Because that's using the hammer here. You literally land a shot every time you swing at him as opposed to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten misses that you get at first. And the hammer also technically doing a little bit more damage to each of the enemies. Uh, one thing about the way that damage works... Regular enemies actually have normal HP the way you would expect them to. And so different colors of enemies have different HP. Some, like I said, will regen HP on their own. Uh, and your weapon, your sword, does different damage as do the bombs, as does the hammer. The hammer technically does a little bit more damage. Now, that said, uh, it really doesn't matter about using any item or bow or whatever. You could actually have a bow with no arrows when you're fighting a boss where you just need to do a, if you need to do sword type damage, if it's not a specialized enemy, uh, it really doesn't matter what you damage them with because it's literally a hit is what will trigger them moving on to potentially their next phase or the next. It's either three hits or six hits or something like that. Uh, and so it's only regular enemies in that dude there where it really matters. Now these guys are rough. I think I'm doing this poorly. I'm probably going to die. Oh, I did not die. I ended up picking up the glasses. Wow, that was close. And here's where I'm realizing, oh boy, I don't have a way to get back to the entrance. So I need to kind of walk all the way back there. If I had gone down one screen, I don't know why I'm deciding to fight these guys. Maybe I'm looking for, I'm safetying it. I need to get out. Maybe I'm just trying to, ooh, I lucked out there. Find a heart or something. Now, when you're down to zero hearts, you will... Uh, and then you survive a certain number of seconds, you will regen half a heart. So it's sort of like a death's door-ish mechanic. I don't know where I think I'm going. 
Uh, I'm trying to use the glasses. I'm trying. I'm just now remembering. Oh yeah, I have the ability to basically warp my way out of here. A little bit of item rearranging. Uh, I'm trying to put the glasses in a specific spot. There we go. So now I can just leave. I don't know where I'm trying to go. I must be completely forgetting that I do not need to fight this boss right now. <laughs> that I'm just trying to leave. But uh, you know, it's jitters of trying out a new speed game. Uh, I think right now, maybe I'm remembering that I'm trying to leave. No, I'm still not doing it right. All right, well, I'm going to walk my way back, apparently, which is the total noob way of doing it. Definitely time save that I can get next time, uh, because what I could have done is the, the glasses allow you to get enter the glitched state of the game. It allows you to walk through some of these blocks, as well as allows you to basically walk between screens. If you remember from ever seen any speedruns of the original Legend of Zelda, uh, there is a way that you can kind of screen wrap from one side to the other. Well, this turns that into an intentional game mechanic. Uh, and if I'm not careful, I'm going to die here. This explodey shroom. There we go. Now we're at the entrance. I, for whatever reason, completely forgot that I could use, do that as soon as I picked up the glasses. Significant time loss that I have that I can save there. But now that I have the glasses, now I'm going to go back through and actually beat the bosses in each level. Now, here as you can see that mechanic, I'm just using the glasses, warping from one side of the screen to the other, which I messed up, and then screen wrapping up. Now, I have nothing else I need to collect from these first three dungeons. Starting in dungeon four, I am going to be looking for a secret item. There is one secret item that's in a hidden room in each of the dungeons. Uh, called the revolver and I'll, I'll talk about that when we get to the very end of the run uh, Very important to the run will that save is a significant. I don't even know how much time Gosh, probably eight minutes of a boss or five minutes of a boss fight You don't need to have uh, if I pick up the revolver So as you can see I just need to kind of cut this guy's rope and then damage him the amount of damage that I do doesn't really matter uh, it's, it's all three hits with him swinging, and then once we picks the ball and hit him, and then he, he blows up. If I did this right, uh, he was not far enough down to the left-hand corner, or that heart would have just shown up. A little bit of tech that I did remember to get right there, which is as soon as you pick up the heart, if you go to the map in order to bicycle out, uh, then you have the ability to skip a cutscene, which is a rather long, unskippable cutscene if you don't do it that way. Now, I've warped all the way through. Uh, so this one is a particularly hard dungeon to glasses through because the empty tiles are trees that you can't walk through. So this is not very easy. Now, uh, I should be I should have used my map to actually look and see about trying to just uh, maybe bicycle to the room before the boss. Now, the room before the boss... Uh, if you have it opened up, which it looks like I do, you can just bicycle too. I don't know why I'm forgetting this. Again, we're showing you all of my mistakes, of all the things that I could have done better. I could literally right now just be bicycling my way to the room before the boss and then move, enter the boss room. Then again, that may have a locked door in front of it that I might not be able to get through. So I might also just need to get to this other item room over here first. I need to go to one more room if I want to do that strat, which I'm not doing. I'm not really not sure what my strategy is that I was going for here, other than just pure frustration that I can't make it work the way that I'm wanting to. All right, from here, I think I'm just going to walk, walk my way over there because the room is open and just walk my way up or, or over to the actual boss room. Oh, see, there I am checking. Okay, so I don't. Never mind. I did not have that room open. Now, I could have glasses over. Maybe I got, I got sick of getting stuck in the wall. Just walk my way out of that, and uh, I don't think I need to do the button puzzle because I actually have the key. But I'm going to try to do the button puzzle anyways. Not sure why. Because I messed it up. Nope, didn't mess it up. Whew, almost messed it up. See, I didn't need to do that, but I do not have the blue key. So again, I'm stuck with... <laughs> now, I got to go back and find where the blue key is because I don't have any way of getting into that boss room. Uh, because uh, I need to be able to go down and back up right in front of it. So this is a lot of me bumbling my way around, uh, trying to figure out how the heck do I get over to the boss room when it's not an ideal layout. Now what I could do here is just enter that room. If I had then gone left, I could have screen wrapped all the way to the left, but I think at this point I'm deciding just to play through the, play through the level as is. 
get the key, make my way back there, go through the key door, and deal with it that way. So again, a lot of time lost I could have had on this level, but or a lot of time saved I will be able to have the next time I play through. And there we go. There's the boss room. So th this is possibly the, the the foresty level is possibly the hardest one that you can uh, that you can go after because of of the trees making it really hard to navigate. There also is a skip there that I learned about after doing this run, which is that if you place a bomb on the ground and then pick it up and then throw it at him, you will skip having to wait for him to throw a skull out at you. And so it's a significant amount of time saved. But for this guy, you're just picking up things as he's throwing it to you. He'll then throw his whole body at you, which you have to pick up, throw into the void, and that's that. That's that's boss. Well, for me, boss number two. That could also be a later stage boss. The bosses, when they uh, are past level three, have a second phase. And so a little bit of optimization is figuring out which bosses have the slow phase... Uh, phase two and trying to get as one of the first three bosses. Now that first boss is always set. You'll always have that, uh, the guy with the flail, I forget his name. You'll always have him as your first boss. Uh, but then after that who you get, uh, as we just saw Mr. Throwy stuff at you, the sand dolphin here who uh, you have to have the swim boots in order to be able to use. This one's a, a first phase is a little bit predictable. These first three hits are always going to be in the same spots. Up left, up right, down left, and now it's random. It's probably a top-ish part of the screen. Do you have to go stand in front of them, give them a swipe, and the platform comes past? Now it's going to be the lower part of the screen, but don't know exactly where. I am guess I guessed actually perfect on that one. Get a nice swipe in. It's going to be now back somewhere on the top-ish part of the screen, but it can be anywhere horizontally. But I got there nice and quick, and there's going to be no phase two on Sand Dolphin this time because it's just level three so far. Another hard pickup, another skip to map to exit, and we're going to go back to the bank. Now, in the bank, starting here is the first place where I'm hoping to find a hidden room that has a revolver in it. Now, hidden rooms are just like you would find, expect them to be and say... Uh, something like Legend of Zelda or, you know, Binding of Isaac, bombable wall type thing. Uh, you can search for them by swinging your sword at walls of kind of full screen rooms. Like this is a full screen room that we're in here. With this layout, though, I definitely know that the hidden room is going to be on the bottom part of the screen. Because with that kind of square grid layout, uh, it's always going to be in the bottom part. So I don't know if I'm going to actually go ahead and look for it now. I might decide to complete it first. Uh, I know that if I go to the next level, I'm going to go right into the boss fight. So I'm going to do the boss fight first and then probably try and find the uh, hidden room after that. I just need to get to... Uh, I missed the early... Ooh, I'm missing it again. There's, there's an early there that once you get that first hit on him, he gets to this predictable piece where you kind of count to five of those snowballs... You count to about eight of these snowballs and then throw another fireball. Almost sent it too early. And then there's another seven and then a fireball. And because he has a phase two, there's actually a nice little skip. I actually had missed it, so I'm going to get my second hit here like that. Okay. Now, when he goes to phase two, I just want to have some flames underneath him. And I missed him. Ooh, I really messed up this phase two fight. If you just dash into him or through him with fire... I guess it doesn't matter how much damage you do, it's just you have to get the hit in to cause them to go to their next phase or their next hit or their next cycle or something like that. So even just a little bit of fire, which isn't a lot. Now it looks like I am going to go ahead and come back instead of looking for uh, the item room right now. Uh, I think my hope is that I can luck into finding the item room. And hopefully it's the revolver in stage five, six, seven, or eight. Uh, but there will be a hidden room somewhere over here. So I'm going to just go ahead and... looks like I'm going to go ahead and mirror or glasses over to the left, which is going to have a blank spot, which is going to allow me to align myself over maybe the other side. Uh, I, I should know with, with the map precisely where I'm going, but I am also looking to see if I can find 
some of the some of the hidden rooms right off the bat because I've got that map and I know kind of what I'm looking for, but uh, it's still specific. Now this guy, you have to use your bow and arrow. His phase two is a little bit annoying. I really do prefer having him as one of my first uh, three bosses because his second phase is just slow. Your, your opening phase to shoot him is slow and it's a little bit finicky to get an arrow shot into a target that's kind of moving in two directions at the same time. As you'll see with this second phase, uh, it's not ideal. So what'll happen is those little rotating smiley faces around him, one of them here in a couple go-arounds, again, you can't speed this up, will become a little eyeball and you have to hit that. And as you can see, you move about the same speed as they're actually going around. And so it can be, oh, I almost missed that, tough to hit. Uh, and so it's, and if you miss it, then they fire out little bubble at you which will explode but we'll give you an arrow in case you're out of arrows you can't soft lock in this fight fortunately and there I, oh i just got it this one has been tough and now a uh, nice little damage boost here to get to phase two just step into the beam fire an arrow or phase three or final phase or final shot or whatever that would be i don't know what, if it's a phase the final shot of phase three is stepping into that beam doing a shot i actually don't know how to do that without damage boosting there's probably a way but yeah, just take the quick damage boost. Should be fine. Now, I was taking a couple swipes for some reason. I'm not sure why. We still haven't found the revolver, so we're still going to need to stumble across that at some point. I think my hope is just that I'll, I'll luck into it, where maybe one of these rooms that I find randomly, because now I don't have a map. So now it's a little bit of trying to just go around. We did. Wow. Look at that. That's See, there's a secret room, and we lucked into it. And because I had the room before the boss already been walked to, it meant that I had the ability to bicycle to that room and then just use the glasses and glasses my way in. So this is actually a really fast redo of dungeon. You need bombs for this one. And I messed up. I was trying to center myself. You want to align yourself in the center. The way I do it is I try to aim the tip of his sword right at one of those two teeth. The reason so... Uh, and that'll be important for skipping the next phase. But first, we want to throw that bomb up, swipe the tentacle, grab another bomb, throw the bomb into his mouth, and then just come straight down and hug the wall. If you center yourself right, just like I had done, it will skip this whole bouncing back and forth, which is a significant time loss if you don't make it. Do the same thing again. I go into the ground, take out the bomb, bomb, swipe, pick up another bomb. This is a tough fight uh, when you're playing casually. Oh, it looks like I did not align correctly. But uh, not too much time loss. If it did, it did cancel after just a couple of bounces. Uh, I'm not sure what got me misaligned because I was only walking down. Oh, and see that? Look at that. That's that's what's tough because I missed that. Fortunately, I, I was able to rebound that with not too much time loss here. Uh, but this second phase, this this is tough uh, when you don't have full hearts. If you've messed up that second, uh, that the little, little kind of ramming him in your face. His second, these little plasma balls here, uh, they are tough to dodge without a speed tunic. Their, their pattern seems a little bit erratic. Some of them slow down. They don't take a direct path. And so it's, it's tough to know exactly how you can get around them. But you're looking for this. Pick up a bomb. Got to throw the bomb into the yellow tractor beam. I almost missed that. And then as he's going through his death animation, you can still die right here. I've definitely not had that happen at all where I've just died. <laughs> but you pick that up, hit A twice, bicycle out. We've got the revolver, meaning we don't have to go back to the other dungeons to pick up that revolver. It means we can just go to level 7 and 8 now, defeat the bosses in these dungeons. Hopefully we can find them pretty easily. Uh, we do know where the boss is, and this should be... Not too difficult to get through. We just got to make our way up a few more levels. Uh, get ourselves to a nice blank screen here where we can line ourselves up in the next screen. I'm going to go ahead and walk to the left a couple times. One more room over. Or it looks like I'm wanting to go up to just make myself be able to walk right into the boss fight from there. That's not, still not a bad enter. The murder tabby. This one's fine to get later stage. It's not, it. the second phase is not too long, so it's not too bad. You want to align yourself. For some reason, I didn't move over to one side. Just make sure you jump there, tank a hit. 
And then you should get over to the side. Dodge the tail. If you get this one lit late stage enough, you're going to have enough health so that it's really not too much of a worry on taking too much of the damage. Even if you get hit by the tail every single time, it's not too bad. Just got to jump as he's coming back down. You get stunned. Swipey swipe. And that's phase one. And this is the Konami code phase. Uh, if you play on 8-bit, this is a little bit difficult to figure out what you need to do. Uh, but you can see a little controller. You can see the screen telling you what code you need to enter. Up, down, up, up, up down, down, left, right, left, right. Uh, free, and you just got to swipe the controller in the different direction. You do have to be careful of swiping at the bats, because if you're trying to kill a bat and the controller uh, materializes right in front of you, yeah, you can accidentally swipe the controller in the wrong direction. If you do that, you just reset. You have to start the code over at the beginning. So again, it can go pretty quickly. You can even use an arrow uh, if you have your arrows equipped to actually uh, hit if it's across the room. So that's one strat to set yourself up to try and hit a left, right, or a left, right shot uh, from a different side of the screen. But into level eight we go. This is going to be our final, uh, our final dungeon that we go through before we head over to uh, fight the final bosses of the game. So I'm just trying to figure out where I where I want to go, trying to make some guesses as to where this might be. I'm guessing possibly straight up. Doesn't look like that's quite right, but uh, we're going to go maybe one more tile. Now we're going to probably check across the top here uh, as much as we can. Maybe check down as well. We're just going to be hunting and pecking around. This is where knowledge of the different uh, ways, uh, the different ways that rooms can be laid out. I'm thinking I'm on the right path. There's another hidden item. I don't need the buoy, the swim buoy. I definitely don't want to go in there as, oh, I went in there. That means I got to go back to the beginning and start over again. I could just bomb my way out, but I think I'm going to take a different path. I'm going to take the same path I took last time, which is an interesting choice. I could, you know, go to the right. Okay, I am deciding, wait a minute, the smarter choice is now check a slightly different path than what I did before. I'm going to wrap my way all the way around to the other end of the dungeon and probably work my way up here, uh, just hoping that maybe he's on the complete one side of the map. Not there. Okay, let's... Uh, where, are we, where are we checking? We're, we're going all the way up. We're checking. There we go. We found it. I could have started the fight earlier. I don't know why I was thinking we get, needed to get centered. But... There's really only uh, just the sand swirly bomb guy. I need to learn these guys' names. Uh, the tech here is literally, you can just hold your sword out. I am kind of walking backwards a little bit, but you can just stand still. Face left, hold your sword out. The, bo the bats spawn on the left side of the top hat there. Uh, and they will, even if you're low on hearts, uh, they will occasionally drop hearts as well. So now I'm going to activate the glasses. You, you need to now pick a spot to stand. And when the cards come out, you'll notice one of them has got a heart in it. So just stand where the heart is, take no damage. And now it's just a matter of having him dodge your attacks. A lot easier with the speed tunic, but just keep moving. You might take a hit or two. It's really not that big of a deal. You have to have the glasses enabled because you need to be in glitch mode to find him after that hat dodging. Uh, and being in the hat dodging, I believe it also saves a little bit of time with some of the animations for when he's going into hat mode. So... Uh, I have seen other other runners actually just be completely in glitched mode using the glasses uh, whenever they are actually going through and, and doing this phase of the fight. I like to enter it about right here because I'm just standing here. I may as well start holding on to that button. So now it's just running around, dodging the hat. Ooh. Oh, that was a close one. There we go. Now we got to find him again. Swipe, swipe. All right. Only two hits on the first phase. Now there are three hits on the second phase. Make sure you just get aligned with... Oh, and I'm missing him bad. Make sure you get aligned with him on the... Uh, on that side. Now you just need to hit him with something. You can use your dash across. I like to go... If you can stay up or down, but he likes to push you to the edge of the sides. Just make sure you can get a hit on. doesn't matter how. You can hit him with flame, hit him with your sword. You should have enough health to kind of tank through that. Uh, and then uh, pick up this heart. Now it's time to go on to the palace. There we go. So once you collect all of those, as soon as that flash happens, you'll have one piece of dialogue here. 
you hit two A's and then to the map to get out. I almost didn't do that. And I would have had a cutscene at the very end. Now, if you get to level eight and you don't get see the thing with all the little coins coming together, it means you skipped a boss and uh, you need to go figure out which one you skipped or just reset. <laughs> I definitely have not accidentally forgotten one of them. So I got to find my way over to the palace. The palace, it is marked on your map. It can be difficult to get to. I don't know where I thought I was going there. Uh, especially because some of these uh, glitches will not work uh, very well. Ah, see, I messed up there again. So, we're going to have to find our way out. I'm having issues. These these, these birds, man, these vultures, they are causing me problems. But I got enough health. I'm, I'm okay. Can't go through there. I don't know where I think I'm going. I keep I keep using the glasses at the wrong time. Now there is a man who can give me an axe. That might be worth going and picking up. Don't know where I think I'm going right now. I could have made my way to that without wrapping the screen. But again, that's just a little bit of learning the mechanics of the game about how you can use the glasses to get to certain areas. I'm not going to bother with actually chopping down the tree he wants me to chop down. Instead, we're just going to go ahead and keep on trying to find the palace. Here's the palace. There we go. Kind of make your way in over here. And we dive on in. Now, let's see if I do this right. I I think I forgot to wrap and I went... Nope, I did wrap. Okay, you go up to the right. I need to wrap the screen one more time to the right before I go up. But I think I went up too early. Nope, I did. I did it right. Okay, then you go over to the left here. Go over, continue screen wrapping one more time. Pick up the blue key. Move back to the right, then I go through and open up this door. I'm going to pick up this tunic here and equip it just to see, hopefully, maybe I can get the speed tunic. I don't know. It's not, I really don't feel like fire resistance. Sure, that's fine. That'll be a little bit extra safety. So now we go ahead and go up, and we want to go to the left. Now, you can push on these gravestones. I don't know why I'm necessarily doing it at this point, because speed tunic's not going to help me all that much. So I think I'm just, gonna, just decided to go. So from here, I need to go over into this room. This is where, again, if I picked up the hammer, this would have been better. But I'm just going to place a bomb there. And reset my items the way they need to be. Let's use the axe. Let's use the axe. Much better taking out those enemies. We're going to go up into this crack over here on the left. We're going to now glasses our way into kind of that middle area on the right. Take out this spider. Then we're going to glasses our way up and around to take out this spider. Careful not to step on the blue pieces. Back up to the top, we're going to walk up, up, go up. No, no, I got I got lost here with what I was supposed to do. That's okay. So now I want to glasses and jump and work my way around. There we go. Now I did it right. And then back down, take out this last spider in this room. You have to take out the spiders in this room to open up a little kind of barricade that was happening before. So I'm going to walk out and around, and now I'm going to glasses my way over. Uh, again, forgetting what I was supposed to do. I needed to glasses my way when I'm up to the back around to the right side of the screen. Here I'm remembering. There we go. I wanted to be inside there. I did that wrong. <laughs> uh, oh, well. There we there we go. And let's see, I'm in there on the wrong side. I'm, you know, oh, well, I'll have to fight these bats. Eh, it happens. I did a little bit wrong. That's okay. Now I'm just going to glasses my way up and around. Other side of this door here, and now we are on our way. There we go. That takes a little bit. When you play casually, you'll spend a good amount of time trying to figure out how to get through that area, which is a, it's part of the adventure of the game. What's the best route to take? There's definitely a guide on the speedrunning.com page as to the best way to get through there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lure both these guys over together so I can kind of hack them both at the same time. They do not get stunned. They will just charge right through you, but grouping them up together definitely the faster way of doing it. So, all right, so let's go ahead, swipe through here, jump through. He's going to ask me if I want to save. No saving. Thank you very much. And now we've got uh, the chairman. Chairman. Manon. Gamamon. Gammon. No, definitely not Gammon. Don't know why you'd think that. <laughs> uh, it's definitely a Ganon fight. So, a little quick strat here. If you jump into him, you can actually do it without taking damage. It skips this bull phase of the fight, and then you're playing a little bit of catch with him with these balls. Now, you can get up a lot closer to hit him, 
Uh, and see there, I did, did it wrong where I actually took damage. It doesn't matter. So long as you jump into him right as he's turning red, you skip this bull phase of the fight. If you did it casually, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's kind of annoying. It's just a tech to right there, jump into him, and you skip all that. Uh, there is a way to do that, to jump, and where you hit him, I think at the, the peak of your jump, so that you uh, don't take any damage. You don't take any damage when you jump into it. But you've got so many, so much health right now. It's really not going to matter all that much. Just move to the side. He'll dash down. I can't remember if we have one or two of these to go at this point. Zip. I think one more. <laughs> A really bad jump there. I basically just walked into him. This should be the last one. So there's definitely a faster way of doing this of standing up right next to him and timing your sword swings. Every time I try to do that, I fail it miserably. All right, so now I want to go through, grab that revolver. The revolver is a one-hit KO on anything in the game, but you only have one bullet. So obviously, we're going to use it on the final boss of the game. Just picked up the power of wealth. And now, spoilers, I won't explain quite what's going on here, but what's going on while you're fighting this guy. Uh, but uh, as soon as he says the word no in the next screen, we fire. We might not be able to actually see the shot uh, once he says no after we go through this little phase of all the four powers. Blah, blah, blah. He's going to say no, and then we shoot him, and that's it. <laughs> and once we blow in the cartridge, that's game over. Now, if you fought, played this game casually, you probably fought and died to that fight many times. You're probably really frustrated to know that uh, you didn't have to do it. So hit yes, boom, and that's time. You can see the top 48, 31 is my time. It'll actually show you that it was a sacrifice run. And that's it, that's that's Lena's Inception. It's a sacrifice ending. Again, play it for yourself definitely first. Get the lore of the story, then play it through it and go for a perfect ending. And, and then play all the challenges. It's, it's definitely a fun game. If you watched all the way through this, uh, I definitely let you know I will be doing some Lena's Inception speedruns over on my channel on Twitch. So if you don't follow me, find you can find me at Skip Skip McLazy. I almost said Skip Dot Lazy. Wow, Skip McLazy over on Twitch is where I will actually be streaming some of those coming up soon, probably uh, shortly after this video comes out, or possibly even right now. Check right now. Check right now. Go and check right now. If you want, that's what you do. Go check right now. See if I'm live. If I am, I'll see you over there, and I look forward to talking about this game and speedrunning. All right, talk to you later. Bye.